that provide less than willing, able, and professional leadership experience in the classroom, in administration, and in the cultures of the community. We invite all Bridgeport citizens to join as a partner with the NAACP in our purpose to secure all civil rights, all civil rights due to citizens of Bridgeport, freedom of discrimination, and the best ed educational efforts made on behalf of the youth, of the community, and, and of the community. Join us at the table for listening and talking in the future. Continuing in the struggle, Re President Reverend D. Stanley Lord, Greater Bridgeport NAACP. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Gladys Walker Jones. Today marks a new school year. Chairman Weldon and elected Board of Ed members, on behalf of the Greater Bridgeport NAACP Education Committee, we repeat the urging for the immediate establishment of a standing and productive health and safety committee. In light of global and national health and safety um, issues affecting our schools, our scholars, our staff, no credible or reasonable Local Board of Education will be without a proactive standing health and safety committee. And speaking of credible and reasonable, it is our expectation that the process to replace Michael J. Tassani will be that coupled with transparency, and we will not accept any side or backdoor shenanigans. Our interim and permanent superintendent needs to be reflective of our community needs to be a highly qualified and certified superintendent or school leader, um, preferably with superintendent experience. One again, who mirrors and looks like the composition of our scholar um, body and city. One who demonstrates moral, ethical integrity. One with, um, who knows Bridgeport and would not push back on calling her their home. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Joanne Kennedy. Good evening, everyone. The scripture says, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not for such is the kingdom of heaven. And I'm a God believing person. I believe in God and I believe how, how you're supposed to treat each other and especially our most vulnerable, which are our children here of the city of Bridgeport. Born and raised here in the city of Bridgeport, I am 62 years old, proud of these children here. I was born and raised here, went to all the public schools. Okay, and today I see here I am, fighting for our children here in the city of Bridgeport. Now, I'm just gonna say some quick things and I really need you guys to think about it because at the end of the day, at the end of your life, each individual, you're gonna have to answer to God for your decisions. The children of the city of Bridgeport deserve the best because they are amongst the best. And continually, the decision of adults here in the city of Bridgeport, the powers that be, whoever you are, I don't have to name you, you know who you are. Because you have God in you just like I have in me. And you're going to have to answer to him. Your uh, decisions have been deplorable, to say the least. Again, I don't have to call a name. You know who you are. When you go down on your knees and pray to God, whatever God you pray to, he'll answer you and let you know whether you're doing right or wrong. So in this stage that we are now, me personally, I'm seeing a lot of things that are not correct for our children. Mrs. Baldwin, I do not know you, but this is controversial, her hiring and Again, with the transparency people, we need to have transparent hires, personnel, 
whoever they are, wherever they come from. No offense to anybody. Everybody has a right to make money. But the fact of the matter is, we want continued excellence because our children are excellent. I'm sure going over to Fairfield, you're going to find excellence also. We care about all children. So let's make that perfectly clear. Okay? So the excellence that you want here, I'm sure you want next door because children are innocent. They're minors. We have to uh, answer for how we treat all children. Okay? One or two more things and I'm done. Board of Education, we need a qualified superintendent. We need qualified leaders over our children, which are mainly black and brown and other 70 other nationalities here in the city of Bridgeport that reflect them. Again, no shade on anybody else, but we have to look out for our children. Okay, because as the adults go, as they've been here, they're not making the right decisions, point blank, period. Okay, and leadership here in front of me, Mr. Weldon and the rest of you guys, come on. The majority of my words go to you. Remember, at the end, you're going to have to answer to him. You need to answer to the community right now, but at the end of your life, I hope you wake up where you want to wake up because you need to treat our children correctly. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. You're welcome. Maria Ramos. Hola, buenas tardes. Voy a hablar en español. No sé si hay traducción, pero el que me entienda, ¿verdad? Mi nombre es María Ramos y soy residente aquí de Bridgeport hace 17 años. Eh, he sido padre y líder, primero para mi hijo, eh, que se graduó de Fersha Wheeler, y para el comité que represento de Major Road Connecticut Madres en Acción. So, eh, nos hemos enterado lastimosamente de que nuestro superintendente, ¿verdad? En noviembre eh, va a salir de su cargo a otro distrito. So, eh, en buena honra, ¿verdad? En buena, eh, le deseamos, yo en lo personal le deseo eh, eh, que sea, que, que el otro distrito llene sus expectativas, pero le pido, por favor, a los nueve miembros del, de la Junta, como madre y como líder, que por favor eh, incluyan a los padres en el proceso de elegir una nueva, un nuevo candidato para esa posición. Eh, pienso que los padres necesitamos eh, tener un foro para poder eh, expresar cuáles son las expectativas que tenemos nosotros los padres eh, o qué esperamos de la posición del superintendente del próximo que venga. Hay muy buenos candidatos en este distrito, pero necesitamos incluir a los padres eh, que hablan inglés, que hablan español o cualquier otro idioma. Es importante incluir a los padres eh, y si los padres no hay niños y si no hay niños no hay posiciones como las de ustedes, ¿verdad? Eh, esperamos que ustedes nueve tomen en consideración eso eh, como criterio, eh, escuchar a los padres para que eh, el próximo eh, superintendente que venga en noviembre, cuando don Mr. Testani salga, eh, sea igual de efectivo o mejor. Gracias. Thank you, Ms. Raymond. Jason Ayala. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Jason Ayala. I am a lifelong Bridgeport resident, a proud member of Faith Acts for Education, a product of the Bridgeport Public Schools, and an uncle to many nieces and nephews that currently attend the Bridgeport Public Schools. It's unfortunate that we are beginning the school year with a search for a new superintendent, but I'm sure we can all agree that it is a very pressing matter that cannot be rushed. So choosing a competent leader for this district that is truly invested in this community is so important. Therefore, Faith Acts is demanding an open, transparent selection process that takes into account the voices of the students, parents, educators, and other stakeholders. We need a culturally competent superintendent who is invested in engaging with community partners such as Faith Acts and many others that work towards getting our children the education that they deserve. One that lives in Bridgeport or agrees to before the end of the initial contract. One that will have a willingness to fight for more money for education from a variety of sources. 
We need a superintendent that has a plan to support the district's basic needs, such as school nurses in every school, support staff, such as social workers, therapists that will support with trauma for kids, a leader that will take action on top priorities of the community, especially expanding before and after school programs and tutoring and turnaround schools. And lastly, a superintendent that can demonstrate a dedication to data informed decision making and regular reporting out to the BOE and the community. Superintendent Sasani, I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. God bless you all. Thank you, Mr. Isle. Pastor Elaine Thompson Ward. Pastor Elaine Thompson Ward. This is, I'm going, to, I'm going to butcher this name and I apologize to, to this individual. Uh, Chinadum Nodum. I apologize if I. No problem. <clears throat> uh, yes, state the name for record. My name is Chinadum Nodum. Thank you. Um, resident since 2001 here in Bridgeport. Alumni of local schools, including Colby, Sacred Heart, University of Bridgeport. And as you can see, Organizer with Faith Extra Education, but I wear many caps. I'm also a, a proud member of Gen Now, as well as a board member for the PT Partners. Um, as stated, that these various roles I've had, it's allowed me to be in this community and see the various aspects of our commu community that have stake in this process. Um, it's unfortunate that we are having to make another change uh, prior to the start of the school year. However, recognizing that uh, things happen, it is our duty as a community and as a board to make sure that the process that we have in selecting our next superintendent is one in which the community is truly engaged that is giving opportunity for all the voices and stakeholders to be um, to be recognized and to be able to go on to record on what they would like to have in this process um, we would love to have something that's similar to what we have seen outlined and what fairfield did in looking for their soup right we want to make sure there's the opportunity for student voices to be heard parents teachers we want the unions to have a chance to give um, to give their say and we want it to be done in a way in which that all these voices are able to really highlight what are the priorities that we all are agreement we need to focus on. We know that there's always issues on funding. We know there's always issues in staff retention. So what is it that we can do in this time to make sure that the leadership we're choosing is able to be cognizant of all of those things and be able to work out a plan that works to the benefit of the students in this community and in such a way that everyone in that is a stakeholder feels satisfied in this process. Um, so echoing some of my co uh, colleagues that may have spoken earlier, we do want a superintendent that is able to have investment in engaging with community partners. Um, we want them to live in our communities. It is that's a simple thing in terms of what it looks like for our students. They they should be able to have the opportunity to go to a grocery store and run into their super and be able to have a casual conversation. They should be able to have the opportunity to um, know that the people who are ultimately in charge of making the decisions about their lives are. Um, are truly invested by living there and being affected by the decisions being made. So we are looking for a super that has, yes, a dedication to data informed decision making that makes it easy to report out both to the board and to the community. So that way there's a, a wide area of transparency. We want to make sure that top priorities, the district's turnaround schools, the schools that are the schools that have been identified are having the most issues or receiving the resources because we do know the pandemic has exacerbated the issues that already existed and therefore the, our turnaround schools would be the most at risk. Um, we want to make sure that again, we are focusing on basic needs. We do need to invest more into our social workers, our psychologists and our, our therapists because the kids are now in multiple years of extended trauma that they need to recover from in order for them to be succeeding in schools. And finally, we want to be able to have a superintendent who is going to continue the fight for more um, resources from other sources outside of what we know we currently have, knowing that there's a there's a way to collaborate with community partners and state partners to find out ways to fully fund our district. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Joe Gritz Thompson. Um, I'm a longtime resident of Bridgeport and also uh, parent of um, two children that, you know, go to public schools in Bridgeport. And um, I'm going to be honest, I, I came here because I know this is uh, probably going to be the last time 
uh, me and Tastani in the same room together. And I just wanted to say off the rip, I, I think you're a coward. I think you're a sucker. And I, and I wanted to be able to say that. Um, we went back and forth with you for almost a year about plenty of issues. And for you to just now just switch and, and, and go to another town is like a waste. You should have been, you should have been left. We've been wanting to leave anyway. So now that we got this, this little time to figure out who's going to be the next superintendent. And like a few people before me said, I will hope that we choose somebody from Bridgeport or a parent from Bridgeport that, that see what we, sh we going through. Um, we have schools like cross that have more substitute teachers than real teachers. So it's a lot of issues going. And, um, you know, like I said, I just I just wanted to put that out there. You know, I'm right now. I'm, I'm I don't have anxiety, but I'm kind of like shaking right now because I'm mad. I'm pissed. You know, for my kids to go to school today, and we don't have a superintendent. Some of them got teachers, and it's just mayhem already. You know, the kids need to stop going through that. You know, I'm a product of Bridgeport schooling, and even then, it was pretty horrible too. Going through Central, doing crossword puzzles senior year in high school. You know, for for and that was like that was a project. So something need to change and it need to change now. And we're just going to keep making noise and, and, and doing what we got to do. You know, people on the board, don't be afraid of people on the board. Stand up. If you got to separate yourself, do that. And even if you got to lose your position, do that, because we're going to stand and rock and rock with you. And y'all know who I'm talking about. And that's all I got to say. Salute. Thank you, Mr. Briggs. Tony Barr. Tony Barr, Dasha Spell, good evening, my name is Dasha Spell, I am a Bridgeport alum of the Bridgeport Public School System, I'm a parent, I am also a leader in this community, I'm here tonight, first of all, congratulations, Mr. Testani, on your new chapter and i'm also here to say that with that in mind let's take this like a business when someone's leaving we you make the moves right away right no offense to anybody but instead of waiting let's make september 1st the last day we have our deputy superintendent let them step in and start the process for the search now, I did go through the bylaws for the Board of Education this afternoon, as well as the city charter. Ironically, there is no kind of stipulation or policy or format about a situation like this. So right now, it really is a blank slate for the board to decide how you wanna move forward. For example, you had candidates previously that were qualified that made it to the last round that you could look at and invite to come back to the table for a conversation. You could start a new search with the company. And the reason why I said move the end date up is because we're paying in a nice chunk of, chunk of money and you have to pay money for these searches, right? So we have to save somewhere because we're always hearing we don't have any money. These are just suggestions and ideas that I thought I could bring to the table. In addition, moving forward, I'm kind of interested in this board's vision for the school district for this year. Let's take it year by year. What is your vision? What is your plan? Thank you and have a good night. Thank you, Ms. Bell. Tony Barr. Thank you, guys. So uh, I guess we had a crossroad with, uh, with not doing anything for our kids. Um, very disappointed in you. Gave you everything in the world. And you couldn't even be true to these kids. And as a friend, because we went to school, we walked Notre Dame halls together, and you couldn't even fit me in nothing with you as well. As a friend to a friend, but that's the word you would like to use. But what I will say that you guys on this board, it's all y'all fault. Nobody else is not going to sit here and beat him up. You know, he didn't do anything. He did what we, what you guys allowed him to do. And that was take advantage. The chair, you was right here. You rolled the way you're supposed to be against anything and everything that's right. 
But you know what I do hope? And I'll have to hope this. I hope God holds everybody accountable for like he said he would, for all the dirt and garbage that's in our city. We have, me, I'm a convicted felon, spent 21 years in federal penitentiary. I can't even get work in the city of Bridgeport, but Joe Gannon, the mayor, can hire all white boys that done robbed and stole police officers that, done, but all, we, got, we got these white boy officers I'm not getting off the topic, but just to show you that we've taken ourselves, Latinos and blacks have put themselves underneath white folks. And you don't even believe that as a person, the worst white person in the city of Bridgeport is better than the best black or brown person. And we prove that every day. Then live generations in the city of Bridgeport. And all you can do is elevate a white person to be your leader. I guess that's Jesus. Because that's what we believe in, right? But I also don't believe you should be allowed to, to stay to November. I think that's an even bigger kick in the, in the face to the people of the city of Bridgeport. I think you should service your ties, thank the people if you want to, if you don't, you don't have to, and, and just move on. So that way we can start now seriously searching for somebody that really wanna be in the city of Bridgeport. God bless y'all and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barr. That concludes public comment. Excellent. Mr. Chair. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Ford, Ralph Ford. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, board members. Uh, my name is Dr. Ralph Ford. I'm a licensed Stand corrected, Dr. Ford. Okay. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and I've been here in the city of Bridgeport practicing for over 40 years. And I've been before this board many times to address issues. First of all, I'd like to say, um, Mike, I wish you well, Fairfield. Personally, we had a good relationship, um, but our kids are right back in the same situation we've been in time and time again. And like others have said, as a board, that's your fault. That's your fault. So I'm not here to beat up on the superintendent. I'm here to beat up on you guys, okay? And I know all y'all are politicians, okay? But you don't have to play politics to be on this board and to fight for our kids. All you got to do is be real, understand, connect with folks in the community, understand what our kids needs. And then you can, you all intelligent folk, you can make the best decision. And we know in the past how it's done. You go in the back room, you meet with the mayor or the town chairman or whatever, and that's how you make the decisions. And the community is always left out. Don't do that this time. You have time really to find a good leader. A good leader. One's not only invested in the, the kids in the system, the system itself, but also is invested in the city. You got to have both. You can't have a superintendent who just cares about the system, but doesn't care about the city. Because our kids live here in this city, their parents are here in this city, they work here in this city, and you can't have a successful system without somebody running the school system that's not invested in the city. So as you do your search, and you should do it expeditionally, as a matter of fact, as others have said, you've had some very good candidates in the last search so you may not have to spend a whole lot of time and money. Maybe you just need to go back and look at some of them folks that you had before you before you make a decision to lead a city. But lastly, I want to say, what do you need in terms of a superintendent? You need not only a person who's well-educated, well-qualified to lead the system, not only to lead the system, but to lead a system that's been in crisis for many years. You need someone that's invested in the kids, invested in the community, invested in the teachers. We should not have people, kids graduating from our system, getting a high school diploma and can't read. So you need to have a superintendent that is committed to not having any kid graduate and can't read. You need a superintendent that is invested in our teachers. No teacher should start the school year and don't have books, supplies, and things they need to work with their kids. So you need an investment there. So again, and lastly, you need a leader that's going to make sure that, hey, we have a school system with largely black and brown kids, and we have kids that go in our system, they have substitute teachers for an entire year, sometimes two years. So we need a, a leader with creative ideas about how to attract good quality teachers in our system. And that's your job. And that's what we elected you to do. So as we move to this day forward, keep those things in mind and get us a su good superintendent. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ford. Mr. Chair. Ms. Castillo. 
I just wanted to provide a, a quick translation for Miss uh, Maria Ramos, who spoke earlier. She shared in Go Spanish. Yes, and I felt like, it, you know, it just was bugging me. I felt like it wasn't equitable that she um, wasn't hurt. So for those in the room that speak English, in a brief summary, she's a mother here in the district. And she was really, really emphasizing the importance of parent um, input in the superintendent, um, in the search process for the new superintendent. Thank you. Thank you, All right, next on the agenda is approval of minutes. We've got nine of them. We can do them all at once or we can do them individually. What's your preference? Yeah, Pastor Elaine is here. She was just going to call traffic, but she is here. Sorry? Pastor, Pastor Elaine is here. Who? Pastor Elaine. Pastor Elaine. Oh, Pastor, Pastor Elaine Thompson Ward. Okay. Please come forward. Good evening, everyone, my dear. My question is, as a superintendent's action should be at the top of his top priority of our community and that our children living in Pacific areas or certain schools how come these children don't have the efficient tutors? How come in the roundabout schools that's supposed to be dedicated to informing us with the data that we need? I was speaking with my niece a little earlier and she informed me of some disturbing news. She was at Barnum School over the summer, dealing with children in the classroom that have no air conditioning. Many students, special needs students, students that are dealing with asthma and other health issues. How come schools like Barnum and Columbus and Reed and Chopsy Hill the children are having, they don't have air conditioning in their classrooms. How come the teachers are having to deal with bringing their own fans into the classrooms so that these children don't have to deal with the heat? It's been, yes, over the summer, 80 and 90 degrees outside, heat waves. And the kids have not, not had to deal with too much of that, but it's still hot outside. We need to have someone that has the time to be considerate about our students. If our superintendent that we pick does not have the needs of our children, then who does? My question. Who does? And the community, us, are asking these questions. What about our children? We have teachers. My, my niece that I talked to was a teacher's aide. She's a para. And if these are her concerns, I can imagine what the teachers are feeling. She walked into a dirty classroom today. Kids are having to eat nasty sandwiches like grilled cheese from the government cheese that's not even melted in the sandwiches or french toast cookies is that what you want your kids to eat in the morning that's full with sugar what's happening what's where's the money going for our kids What happened to the funds? We need someone that's going to be concerned about our children here in Bridgeport. What's going on, people? That's our purpose for being here tonight. We want to know what's going on. Where are the funds going that's been sent down? They're going to Westport. 
they're going to Naugatuck, they're going up to Bloomfield. But what about our kids here in Bridgeport? And I can speak honestly, because I used to be a foster grandparent that was in the school. I got grandkids that's still in the school system. So I know what goes on. Does anyone care about our children? I even tried to get a hold of you. I didn't even hear anything back from you, Miss Bobby. Can someone help us out here? That's our purpose here tonight. We're trying to find out what's going on. Give us somebody that cares for our children and their well-being. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Approval of board minutes. Again, do you want to do them all at once or one at a time? Okay. First one is May 23rd, 2022, regular meeting. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Mr. Benahan. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Allen. Oh, note for the record, Ms. Allen has joined the meeting. Uh, is there any discussion or edits? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mr. Skolovic abstains. I abstain. Ms. Neptis Perez abstains as well. Okay, June 9th, 2022, special meeting. Is there a motion to approve? Moved, Moved by Ms. Allen. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Benahan. Any discussion or edits? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? Mr. Skolovic abstains. Same. Baptiste Perez abstains as well. June 16th, 2022, special meeting. Motion to approve. Moved by Ms. Allen. Is there a second. second? Second by Ms. Castillo. Is there any discussion or edits? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Aye. Mr. Sokolovic and Ms. Baptiste Perez abstain. June 21, 2022, special meeting. Is there a motion to approve? I, I would like to make a... Sorry? I would like to make an edit. Are we on June 30? We need a motion to approve first. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Ms. Castillo. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Allen. Edits? This is June 30th, correct? Sorry? Is this June 30th? June 21. Oh, never mind. I'm sorry. I have an edit for June 30th, but I'll wait. So any edits for June 21? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, oppo any opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Ms. Baptiste Perez, Ms. Baptiste Perez abstains. June 28, 2022 special meeting. Is motion to approve? So move. Moved by Mr. Benahan. Is there a second? Second, second by Ms. Allen. Any edits? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. June 30, 2022, special meeting. Is there a motion to approve? By Ms. Allen, is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Lombard. Any edits? I have one edit on page 49 of the packet. I'm referred to as Mr. Castillo. I just want that to reflect my, that I identify as a female, she, her, hers. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. So the motion is to approve with edits. Is that agreed? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? Abstain. Ms. Baptiste Perez abstains. July 5, 2022, special meeting. A motion to approve, Mr. Benahan. Second. Second. Second by Ms. Castillo. Any edits? All in favor? Aye. Any Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Baptiste Perez abstains. July 6, 2022, special meeting. Motion to approve. Moved by Ms. Allen. Is there a second? Second. Second by second. Mr. Lombard. 
Uh, any edits? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, any opposed? Any abstentions? Aye. Ms. Kolovic abstains. Aye. And Ms. Baptiste Perez abstains. And last, July 11, 2022, special meeting. Motion to approve. So moved. Moved by Ms. Castillo. Is there a second? Second, second. by Ms. Allen. Uh, any edits? Yes, Mr. Chair. I have an edit for the July 11, 2022, and I know it's a special meeting, and we really talk all about this, but I want to put it short for the record. When we do the vote that I was confused and I was not understand because I was in online and everything that I know that I vote just for the votes, but I know for the record, you told me in the email, I cannot do nothing, but I want to be shown the record because I know a lot of people ask me and tell me about this. So be sure for the record, my vote for that day was no. So I just want to put that for the record, please. Okay, please note that, Mr. McLeod. Okay, Thank all you. in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Ms. Baptiste Perez abstains. You too? Yes, sir. And Mr. Scala. Chairman's report, I have nothing to report. Committee reports and referrals. We, I don't think any committees have met all summer. So do we want to go down this or do we want to dispense with it till the next meeting? You bet. Did you? Okay. All right, well then we'll go down the list. Uh, ad hoc district-wide branding initiative. We didn't meet during the summer, but we plan to, um, I plan to host a meeting on September 14th, the third Wednesday of the month at six o'clock p.m. Okay. Ad hoc district-wide calendar committee. We met twice over the summer and we're meeting again September 12th. Okay. Uh, and uh, oh, sorry. To say, and we're, we're for, this, for this upcoming meeting, we're talking about one of the two suggest, one of the two real suggestions. We'll talk about that one at this meeting and the one at the next meeting. The other place we Okay. Contracts committee has not met. Take in referrals for committees. You want a referral? Okay. Yeah, I'd like to make a referral to the district wide calendar committee. Um, that one is notice going out to the community regarding the content of what's going to be discussed, that it's clear. The notice saying nuclear option, if I'm new to the district or a parent, I don't know what you're talking about. So it needs to be spelled out okay. to be compliant that what that option is and what's going to be done on that particular day. So my referral to the committee is on any notice for that upcoming meeting is clearly identifying what's going to be discussed. So any new parent, any parent in the district can easily identify it and be able to come to that meeting and know what's going to be. Absolutely. Okay. Because okay. new the option, I don't know if you're talking about Hiroshima or some kind of issue in China. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Contracts committee, uh, we have not met over the summer. But we'll be meeting on Wednesday at 6.30 at Central High School to uh, receive the bids for nutritional items, food bids for the coming school year. And we have uh, proposals that were received for special education auditing services. So we'll be discussing those items. Any referrals? Okay, what was the date? Wednesday, Wednesday. 630 Central High School Library. Educational diversity, equity and inclusion, Ms. Castillo. Do not have a meeting on the calendar yet, but we okay. will shortly. Okay. Any referrals? No. Uh, facilities committee, uh, we did not meet, but we will be meeting in the near term. I need to schedule with the committee members. We have one item that needs to be addressed, which is the fee schedule for facilities usage by outside individuals. So we'll update that. Any referrals? Yes, Mr. Chair, I will refer and really spoke about this and I'm going to set it again and I will send information again. It's about security. I know we have something, but it's, it's, it was not something I expect. It was not something that the public and parents and people community want to know, you know, how safety our kids and staff and parents we are in the school. So I would like to have an um, invite and set it again to have our security team information, our tenant Greg, as always very professional, he can us let us know what's going on in our safety or kids. So I will email you what I want 
Again, thank you. Okay. Finance Committee, Ms. Baptiste Perez. Um, we don't have a scheduled meeting yet, but there's a few things I do want to refer to committee. First, I need the budget variance report for the end of the last school year. I need to identify any and all facility costs that happened during this summer and any upcoming expected costs that's going to come to finance. Also, it's our ooh, that feedback is real. Also, pursuant to the statute, I, as the finance committee chair, we need the line item budget for where all the money is going for the school year. I haven't seen or review that as well as where the money for our ESSER funds are going to be applied. Uh, let's see, what else do I need for that? Yeah, most important is the budget variance report. Also, any and all pending contracts that are supposed to be executed by you, Mr. Testani, I want that identified with the costs as well as with the previous budget, what was projected and what's the actual cost. So that way I know with the committee we're actually going to be on track and so we can actually see where the money goes. I think that's been a big concern with the members in the audience. Okay. Any referrals? Do you need that typed up or are you going to get that down for well, the I meeting? Think, I think this is. Uh, no, this is. Okay. I just want to make you're sure. Setting, you're setting your agenda. Yep. I would suggest you, you know, put reduce this to writing. I mean, it's also our superintendent, so I just make sure he's taking notes on what I'm asking for. Yeah. But, um, so I would reduce that to writing. Send it to Mr. Testani and Ms. Siegel. <laughs> Governance, we have a couple of policies to wrap up. We have the field trip policy to finish, as I recall. Um, I thought we wrapped it up. We I thought we needed to do one final. <laughs> that was my recollection. All right, we'll double check. It's been a while, so maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, and Ms. Castillo has referred an ethics policy to governance as well. Any further referrals? Yes, I have a referral for governance, Mr. Chair, and I know you told me this at the time. I tell you and inform you, and then I really read it. And everything is about the board education and the bylaws. I believe we have us, us, a board member, sit down and review what's going on with the bylaws. It's a lot of things I would like to see it and some change. I will email you what is and you know what I'm talking about because we have a lot of people that really read the bylaws. Um, we have the board education. I read it, and it's a lot of things that have to be updated and changed. So I'll email you what I'm talking about, please. Okay. Thank you. Personnel committee has not met, uh, but as I understand, there's a couple of positions that we're going to need to interview. Are those ready? Not yet. Okay. Do you know what they are? Um, Black Rock principal. That's right. The, the Black Rock and Fairchild principals. And director of special uh, education. Director of special. Okay. Students and families. Students so and family. The first meeting we're going to have September 15, 2020. Um, that's a Thursday. It's going to be Central High School at 6 p.m. Okay. Any referrals? Okay. Teaching and learning. Ms. Baptiste Perez. That means to be scheduled as well, but. Just for the record, I'm going to make another referral to my committee uh, that I want to see a report of the number, if there's any vacancies, the numbers of teacher positions that we have available, the numbers of certified teachers on staff, and I want a status report on a special education audit before Mr. Testani leaves. So okay. preferably by the next teacher and learning meeting. Okay. Any referrals? Okay. Status hasn't begun yet. No. The special ed audit has not begun. The contract has not been approved by the contracts committee or the full board. That's the status of the once once approved. When would you anticipate that work to start? It will start immediately and it will take several months. Okay. okay. Superintendent's report. Yes, sir. Um, I, Really actually wasn't going to say much, but there's a few items I'd like to clarify because I think there's um, information that is out there that just isn't being um, found. First, all the financial reports for the entire district, including a line by line budget, is on our website. It's on their financial reports. It's available to the public um, and it's updated um, 
regularly as um, we're required to by law. So that is all available on the website for anyone to view if they like to. It's a line by line budget, uh, all our uh, financial reports that were uh, required to by law. So that that's first and foremost. A couple of things were mentioned this evening that uh, we presented at the latter part of the year in a board meeting, uh, increase of social workers. We increased our social work staffing last year by 10. We increased our school counselor staffing last year by 10. We also created a student support team at the district level to go in and help schools that were having difficulties and may need additional support to um, help students. Um, we created at nine schools, we brought in effective school solutions, which was approved by this board to have therapeutic support personnel at those schools um, that had the highest need to help uh, address mental health concerns. Uh, we partnered with Ryasat, Mark Donald's here um, to bring in restorative practice interventionists at additional schools. We eliminated in-school suspension so students didn't sit in a classroom all day doing nothing. They work with our restorative practice folks and get right back into the classroom so they can be educated. We are short. We are short teachers. We have the least amount of vacancies of all the large school districts in the state. We have and we have created partnerships with every college and university in the area to increase our teaching recruitment. Uh, we also created a uh, special education fellowship to get teachers cross endorsed who are in the classrooms this year as they begin their um, higher ed training in the areas of special ed coming out of other classrooms. We've come created a cross endorsement program for our English language learner teachers. Um, to, as Ms. Ramos would attest to, we opened the Welcome Center last year for the first time in our district where families from outside of the country that come to Bridgeport have a place to go, be welcome, be registered, get all services prior to entering a school building. Um, we collaborated with uh, Caribe youth leaders on a number of programs throughout. So, uh, you know, I just want to highlight some of them. We integrated for our pre-K and up to kindergarten this year, a uh, literacy program that did not exist prior, where kids read over 50 million words since December prior to entering kindergarten for the first time uh, today. So there's a lot happening. We implored over 200 teacher leaders to support and mentor younger teachers and teachers that may be struggling in the classroom who went through extensive training at the Teacher Leader Institute this past summer. Um, we can go on and on and on. We hired 40, uh, 44 easy teachers last year. These are additional uh, uh, elementary teachers at every school to provide small group support for students that are struggling post pandemic. Um, and many of the things that I've just mentioned will go away, correct, when the ARP ESSER money funds go. So in terms of advocacy, um, try to present legislation through the CEA, through the Alliance districts to try to recruit and in conjunction with the BEA to give incentives to folks to stay in Bridgeport and come teach in Bridgeport. Met with the Speaker of the House in his office in Hartford with three other districts to try to advocate for additional funding through ECS. Met with the head of the, uh, the Senate, uh, Martin Looney. Met three times personally with the governor of the state of Connecticut. And at all of that, we did not receive additional funding. I can't do this alone. No superintendent can do this alone. These are lawmakers. This is a collective voice from this community, from communities like Bridgeport, to say enough is enough. At that point, I, at this point, I'm going to say but these are just a few of the items. But listen, it, we're going to work hard, whatever the last day is. I gave 23 years of my career here in Bridgeport to say someone doesn't care. You know, that's just, I, I guess, somebody's opinion. Um, in terms of residency, for, for my buddy out there, Joe Gritz, lived over 40 years in this city, so I'm not an outsider. 
So let's let's all walk away here. Um, I'm proud of, of what we've done. I'm proud of the staff. I'm proud of the community, the, 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 the parents that support kids every day, not, not come here and throw rocks. I'm one of the parents who support them every day. Thank you. Um, okay. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So don't say that like that. All right. I said so I appreciate it. Mr. Tistein. Okay. Uh, I th there are some tensions in this room. There are some tensions in this room. So what do you, you, you Guys, you we can't do this. There are some tensions in this room. We had public comment. Let's just walk away from this and just move forward with the future. Okay. That's why I call him a sucker. I don't see him. Okay, okay, again, let's just move forward. Move forward. Next item on the agenda. Yeah. Next some. item on the agenda. Uh, the superintendent report. I got some questions about the you have superintendent questions? report. Okay, fine. And also. Go ahead, Joe. Going back to Mr. Benahan's referral for uh, security, I don't know if everybody remembers right way back to the school shooting when security was so urgent. We were supposed to have a community forum with the public with Lieutenant Greg. I'd like to know what happened to that. And while we're on security as well, I would like to know why we have a police officer in the building. Are we paying for the police officer? It seems like every time we get a tense meeting, we got to have a police here. If we're afraid of the community that we're governing in, we should not be governing in the community. I think, I think this is a waste of money. We have so many things to spend money on, and I just would like to note that for the record. But back to the security thing, when are we going to have our security forum to address? Chief, Gar Chief, Chief Garcia could not make the forum dates that I had provided for her. I'm still waiting for an opportunity to collaborate with her on this community forum on um, school safety and security. And in terms of Sergeant Parks, we are not paying Sergeant Parks to be here. May I ask who requested a presence? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure the request came from. Okay. Okay. Was I, I also any have other a questions? question regarding the Go superintendent's ahead. report. I know it was mentioned regarding reaching out to Hartford and the community for funding. Um, for the funds that we did receive with the ARP ESSER funds, did you meet with community organizations to get their feedback as to what should be done with the money, including Faith Acts? I did not meet specifically with Faith Acts. We had community forums that were welcome to everyone to attend and also um, surveys that were available and continue to be available online. Did you meet with any of the community organizations? Not that individually, no. Bridgeport? I did not single out any community organization individually, did not. Were you invited by any community organization? I was. I was not available on June 7th to attend that meeting. I believe we had a meeting scheduled. Um, I don't know if it was a committee meeting or a board meet. I, I believe it was a committee meeting that evening. Is that it? Mr. Chair, Mr. Benahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Tistani, um, I just want to ask a question. I know the pastor, she's talking about how our kids are suffering the staff in the room when it's so hot. I know there had to be a budget or something or a grant to help all these students and, and, and teachers. They're suffering so bad. I really have the experience to go to visit some school in the office, very cool, but when you take the step in the hallway, it's hell. It's so badly that people have asthma, people sometimes short of breath, sometimes they have to take the steps. The room is, is terrible. You cannot concentrate. Staff, they cannot be concentrating your home, you know, the little kids especially. They have to be something because something is always a budget or something is a money around there, but something we, is not, we don't need it or it's not necessary. I don't know, you can do whatever you have to do before you leave and everything. I would like to be the can buy some fan or AC, something. I know some school, the, the put it AC is very difficult because the vote, you know, the, the power, I understand, but at least a fan, something in case they can <laughs> breathe fresh air. Um, other thing is that I, me and you, we go back and forth in the email that I know you send an email about the policy, about the board members of the school. And I want to say this again, and you know this, and board members and everybody know this. I'm not here to tell the staff or any principal what they have to do. That's not my job, and that's not my role. I don't want to be sure that in the record. 
because whatever they tell you wrong, information is wrong. And you know exactly, for almost three years, I'm sitting down here as a board member, and you be as a superintendent of school, you do a lot of amazing job before. Why are they acting like I'm doing something bad and I'm doing something I don't supposed to be doing? When it's, 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 it's incorrect, it's wrong, or they're lying to you. You really know, and you really give me the permission, and you say, well, it's okay. When I go to visit the pack or BTS, so yes, if I see a staff, I see a principal, I'm not gonna turn around. You know, I got pride. I can say hi, good afternoon, how you doing? And I'm here to support you. I introduce myself. That's it. Whatever is out of my role, that's not my job. That's not my protocol. And you really know that. So I want to be sure for the record and all your staff from Brisbane School. If I go to school, it's for help pack or BTS and anything they need. I'll be here to help them. I don't want this division because formers, they separate. And I'm not, I'm not that person. I believe we are not that person. As so far we have the board, we now have to work with staff and very professional. And what I want the staff to believe in us, trust us. Like are we here to help them? Not to make a division or make a trouble or let's have a, no. I'm not here for that. And I believe one of us, we're not here for that. We working as a team. I want to work as a team like we are because all of us here, including the parents, everyone, we care about the students of Bridgeport. I'm tired about before they talk so negative about Bridgeport. And we, we cannot have that. We cannot have that. Another thing I want to tell you something, I cannot, and also, if you really know the reason I visit the school, because I sent you the picture. The reason, because this is not good and it's not safe for the kids. Because we care about the safety. Everyone is in that building. We're not here to get trouble for nobody. No. That's not my job, and no, I already no one's here. The other thing I want to tell you, and I cannot shut up my mouth, and I'm very shocked what are you doing for our Bridge Sports School. You are, I'm shocked what you're doing for our kids, parents, staff, and everything. I trust you. I trust you. And this is not I'm against you. I understand that you got another opportunity to get a job. It's fine. I understand that. But the way you did it, I not appreciate that. And I believe not only me, not only me, and I'm supposed to work together as a team. You know I put my head for you. I've got, got people against you, and I really say it, I put it in my Facebook Live, and I keep saying, you know, you was doing an amazing job, but the way you treat us, the way you, it's like you take a knife and you score straight in my heart. That's the way I feel. It hurt me a lot because you was doing an amazing job here in Brisbane School. The only thing I can tell you is, Mr. Michael Testani, I wish you the best. And remember that God is watching everything. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. On the, um, I know that we're starting the new school year and I know you sent out a notice concerning monkey pops. I just want to know like how how is the for the parents and any community leaders, how is the district preparing itself for either COVID coming back or monkey pops? Like what should the parents be prepared for as their students are getting back into the school? We did send out two notices and posted them on the top header of the website. Uh, and that came from the Department of Health in conjunction with Liza Early, our nursing supervisor. Mr. Chair, can Testani, can you please um, just let us know if you can do something to about the room, the heat, and you can buy some fan or we, or we have a budget or something, we can help the staff, please. I would appreciate that. So we talked about this today, the teachers union and I, we do have two schools, Wilbur Cross, and Columbus School that are scheduled for air conditioning next year. That was that was supposed to happen this past summer, but because of a number of delays, um, some of the preliminary work will be done during school vacations throughout the year. Um, whatever can get done, that won't disrupt those buildings for opening after vacations. But Columbus and Cross will get air conditioning. Um, it's been spec'd out. Uh, bids are going to go out the whole nine yards. In terms of, as you know, with Bassick High School being built, there's nothing we can do at this time. When Bassick is built, Bassick and BMA will be under one roof in an air conditioned building, which will then allow classical studies, classical annex to move into a, an air conditioned Bridgeport Military Academy. So um, those are six schools. We're not gonna invest in air conditioning in buildings that are extremely old, Hall and Edison, for example, uh, Park City Magnet, Skane, John Winthrop, these are all schools that in conjunction, we started the preliminary conversations with the city of Bridgeport before COVID and then things have gone sideways. 
we need to re reestablish um, with the city a master plan on how to get those buildings either renovated as new or new schools built. Uh, but that's going to be a huge undertaking that's going to involve um, the city of Bridgeport, not just the Board of Education, and uh, also whatever the state construction office will allow in terms of approved projects for reimbursement. I, I, am, I really understand about those AC, the power, I understand, but at least fan something, you know, at least they can have a fresh air so they can rotate, so, you know, the room. So anticipation of the, the remaining Hopefully the, this week, according to the weather, it should break over the weekend. Uh, we have sent out notification. We'll go on a uh, half day schedule the rest of the week to pr provide relief to students and staff. Thank you. Okay. I, I have another uh, question and comment for Superintendent Tessani. First, I want to wish you the best. Shared a lot of sarcastic laughs. Um, your mic's a little close. It's hard to. A lot of sarcastic laughs um, for the work that you did do with the district. I voted no with the renewal because it was a material breach of contract that you live in here. I, I'm originally from Brownsville, Brooklyn, New York, and I haven't lived there in 10 years. And I'm born and raised there. And even though I'm born and raised there, I'm an outsider now. I don't remember what it's like to live there. I go visit my family in Philly, I'm definitely an outsider. And so I, I wanna be vocal to the rest of the board that I think it is imperative, especially in this situation, now that the pie is all over our face as board members, that we choose a superintendent that's actually going to live in the district and reside in the district and be about it. Not to undermine it because that material breach of contract as an attorney, in the long run, it saved us money by you resigning. Um, but I do have a question but to piggyback off of Ms. Brown is, why is there such a delay with establishing a community health committee? Uh, why, especially we have uh, COVID-19 is not necessarily done, although most the majority of the population has been vaccinated. It's like we have monkey pops. We're amongst the beginning of the flu season. Uh, what is the big delay? I, I realized that we, we were really quick to create a calendar committee with no outside concern from the community. But when our community's health is at risk, uh, what, why, why can't we as the Board of Education, is there something from you or is it something from the board at B that what's preventing it from us actually just having a say to have a discussion so there's an actual committee? There is a health and safety committee that's in conjunction with the city of Bridgeport that meets regularly. So can, shouldn't there be one with the Board of Education or shouldn't they be reporting to us what's going on so that way we know how we should interact and implement policies that impact our kids? Establish a, we can establish a committee, okay. What, what would be the goals and the objectives that you'd like in the committee? I mean, uh, there's a, you named it, we have a bunch of social workers, new people in our buildings because of social, emotional health issues. We're still in pandemic sickness. That we can put that on the next agenda and establish it. So, place it on the agenda, or should it just be a motion for the creation of a community health committee in front of the board? Because if so, so moved. No, you need to put it on the agenda. So, I'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting. So, uh, we'll, establish, we'll establish it at that point and assign members. Okay, so okay. in two weeks, we'll have a motion. It'll be on the agenda. It'll be a new business to, item new at business. your request. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. No old business to be transacted. New business establishment of personnel search committee to fill the position of superintendent of schools. So this is the first step in the road that we go down 
to find our next superintendent. Um, we have with us tonight Patrice McCarthy, who is the executive director of the Connecticut Association of Boards of Education. And she's here to give us a little bit of a tutorial on what the normal process would be. Um, I've been through it three times, but I think most of us have never been through it. So I want uh, to have everybody get an understanding of the um, typical process that we would follow. So Ms. McCarthy, if you would. Good evening, and I wish all of the students and staff in Bridgeport a wonderful, successful school year. As a Board of Education, you are about to embark on the most important process you will undertake as a board, choosing your next educational leader for your school districts. Um, we strongly recommend that a Board of Education appoint themselves as the executive level personnel search committee. That enables you to conduct this process in a way that will maximize the pool of candidates that you receive. Individuals serving as superintendents who have a positive relationship with their boards of education are very reluctant to engage in a process that is fully public in terms of their identity from the beginning of the process because that inevitably chills the relationship they have with their current board. So you want a highly qualified broad pool of candidates and you will get that. You will have the best chance of success if you appoint yourselves as the personnel search committee. And I've heard many comments about transparency tonight and there are ways that, that you as a personnel search committee can address that. First, we strongly recommend that you hire a search consultant. That first, of, that means that there will be an expert who it's, fortunately you have a chairman who has been through this process before. I imagine that not all of you have been. That gives you an expert who has been through many superintendent searches that understands the process, that knows how to recruit candidates, and knows how to sell the district. Because an important part of this process is not just you are looking for a superintendent, but superintendent candidates are looking to see, is this a good match for them? Because that is the most important thing. It has to be a good match between the board and the superintendent. So. There are terrific superintendents that if their um, relationship, if their leadership style doesn't work with the Board of Education, then that's not going to be a successful relationship. The, uh, the booklet that I gave you gives you a number of questions that you would want to pose to search consultants when you interview them. I'm not going to go through all of those. That's that's for you to um, work out among, among yourselves before you start that interview process. My experience is that you will obviously need to appoint an interim superintendent because a good thorough search process takes four to six months. And that's what you owe the students in Bridgeport. I'm happy to take questions at the discretion of the chair. Sure, yeah, feel free to ask questions as okay. she goes along. Ms. Brown? Yes, so I have a question. Um, you mentioned the interim superintendent. My concern, and I want to know if this is possible, do, does the board create the, the, um, the processes for this? For example, last time, I wasn't a part of it until I actually got on the board, but the, sup the interim superintendent could not apply for the superintendent's position. It after the period was done. They would have to exclude themselves from the process. For us to be able to identify qualified candidates, because they can come from within our district by itself, some of our own staff are qualified to possibly take this role. My question is, would could we 
be able to remove that from that um, process so that if they are interim and they do well, instead of searching far and wide, if we can secure them, then they can be our superintendent versus knocking people out of the bracket who they won't apply for the position because they know only interim is going to get them so far. Th that is completely up to the Board of Education. You can so I would recommend that you dis make that decision before you select an interim, that you not change midstream because that creates concerns about transparency in the process. Okay. Um, but can you can, I, it's up to the board to make the decision. Can I note that what is done most of the time is the Connecticut Association of Public School Superintendents, CAPS. Yeah. They have a roster of retired superintendents. So they are not going to apply for anything. They, they will come in, they will guide you through a six or eight month period. And then there's no conflict of whether or not uh, they may or may not apply because they're retired. They're already collecting their pension. But, but that's what I'm saying. And is, so that keeps it. But what I'm saying is that, for example, the last pool of candidates that pursue this position, one was out of town, one was from our city. Neither of them were near retirement. But the goal of it, they realized that that little small period, window period, would disqualify them from actually being the superintendent. And they were both good candidates. So what I'm saying is I don't want us to go back in that situation. Say we have one of our own staff that decides they would want that. Is there any cushion if they don't, if they can't stay? Do they go back to their normal job? I would rather if it's someone who's qualified and is going to stay than to in the process, we find nobody and our interim superintendent is the one, then let's go with the you one. You could do that. You, you know, I'm just that. saying, I'm just I just saying, did, I didn't like the process. Yeah, no, yeah, no. And, and that's why I'm saying that, that that's why a lot, of, a lot of districts just go to CAPS and they get resumes and they pick one and they know that this isn't even going to be an issue. Mm. So we can we can explore that as we go along. Just just tell them. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but we had a superintendent service interim that was retired and then a superintendent search process that was stalled for about two years. When was that? I believe it was uh, Dr. Rabinowitz. She was retired and we pulled her in for that very purpose. Yeah, he's talking about when Rabinowitz was there and we wound up keeping her on a, yeah, a more long-term long basis. I, I, this is one of those pit, that's one of the pitfalls of that's right. Yeah. Really okay. So if we keep the process open, I mean, okay. it doesn't make sense to have an exclusion made okay. that we could always just overturn later on if we like the person, okay. which did not go over well this time when we came out of a back room and just said, okay. we got a new superintendent that we put in the contract. So I think we should avoid the same pitfalls we fell into last time. Sorry. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. I am I'm, I'm at your disposal. Um, the another important thing for you to do as a board is to identify there was discussion tonight about the vision what to to make sure that you are clear about your vision and that you communicate that during your search process to identify what the strengths that you are seeking in a new superintendent and what the expectations of the board are i heard discussion about a number of upcoming school construction projects um, thinking about, do, do you want to make sure the individual has experience in that area? Because that could be very important. You need to look at the current job description and make sure that it is actually up to date. Because very often, and particularly during the COVID years, uh, some responsibilities got moved around. Maybe those responsibilities are going to come back to the superintendent. Maybe they're going to stay delegated uh, where they might where they might be effective and the current structure. The interview process is extremely important and the consultant will guide you through that. Will I help work with you to identify questions that are legally appropriate um, and to help prepare you to conduct an effective interview. But before you um, get to the interview process, one of the important roles for the search consultant is to conduct focus groups in the community. Yeah. That's where you're going to be able to get meaningful input from parents, teachers, students, the community at large. That is a key component that 
you really want to have, and it's very important to have someone who takes a broad perspective, has seen a number of searches, has conducted focus groups before, uh, to, to have those individuals conducting your, your focus groups. Thank you. Um, you just touched on the big um, need for transparency and input from the community, from everyone in the community, teachers, parents, uh, maybe some students would speak up, but, but you also spoke about the importance for confidentiality for the candidate's sake, yeah. for especially for someone who might be very experienced because they're currently serving as a superintendent. Um, so that's balancing the two. Um, what do you see, if any, are pro the pros of conducting the interviews completely in the open where the candidate's identity is known? I frankly don't see any pros. You may create a perception of transparency, but if you're ending up with a less than robust applicant pool because you're doing that completely in the open, then you are not providing the best opportunity for the students in Bridgeport. Now, certainly a search consultant can work with you to provide regular reports to the community, communication uh, to the community about the stages of the process without revealing individual candidate names. That's where you really diminish your applicant pool. And we've seen, we've had applicants for superintendency who were one of three finalists, we've had them withdraw when their name was going to become public because they had a great relationship with their current school district. And if they were not going to be the finalist, they didn't want to damage that relationship. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Question. Um, so can we have parents involved to so interview the superintendent or they can do a forum, whoever is running, because it's very important the parents and community ask questions to them because we want to know how important it is for the person who's running, you know, how for, you know, with the kids. So they um, they can be part of the interview or they can do a forum, you know, what the candidate was running. So the community parents, they can ask questions. Normally what happens, so the focus group is before um, you even start down, narrowing down the uh, candidates that you will interview as a board. Generally what happens is the finalist is brought to the school district for a day. There are meetings with all constituencies in the school community before the board actually takes final action. Um, I just wanna to add to what um, Mr. Lumbar said. That puts us in a very tough situation because if we are, if we are the board and, their claim, and the community is claiming transparency, how do we provide that if the process can possibly eliminate a, a candidate from not falling through with the process? When, as our roles here is to be able to show them and they bring them a part of the process so they understand who are the candidates, who's gonna participate. So are you saying when you get to the last final three, we reveal who they are or in the very beginning, I'm just, it just puts the community in a in a real in a real un, a real blind spot because they don't know what to expect and they are th that community forum that you were talking about gives them an opportunity to vet their own candidate before we make a final decision as well without them having to taint the process but give them an opportunity to say what they feel or what they think or who's going to come into their district i get it that that's you know the way it's been done over the years but I think it's, it just puts the community and the board at odds with that word. My response to that is that you have been elected by the community. They have entrusted you as board members to make these important decisions for the children in Bridgeport. That is a sacred responsibility. And you fulfill the will of the community by conducting this process in a way that gets you the most robust pool of candidates possible. 
It really isn't a matter of you. Li you listen to the community. You know their priorities. You know their expectations. You need to come together as a board to take all of that into consideration when you are identifying the vision, the expectations, the strengths that you're looking for. So you're you you are the voice of the community. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Um, th there have been um, educators who have expressed an interest in being a part of this process uh, and lending their professional expertise toward it. Uh, is it appropriate that um, administrators and or teachers be a part of the actual selection committee, or is it more appropriate that they participate at some other level? Our recommendation for best practice is that you get that input through a variety of mechanisms, including the focus groups that I've talked about. Um, you can certainly communicate with leadership of, of the uh, various unions in the education system, but that you that you are the, de the decision making body. I, I have a question. Could you explain again the process or maybe I was just confused with a superintendent that is retired in Connecticut. Yeah. Is there any kind of delay or is it up to the board as we develop the this is what we're looking for standards and criteria? Uh, I'm not quite sure. You said delay. Uh, I mean, hold on, I keep getting really bad feedback. Um, no, just explain the process okay. with uh, retired superintendents in the state, um, and also just I guess it's a bit of a concern because just from today's uh, public comment, a superintendent that reflects the community, I get the implication that is referring to racial and ethnic background. So if we're looking at retired superintendents, more likely they're not going to reflect that very background. Um, I, I'm going to separate the issue of the interim superintendent from your search process for a permanent person in the position, OK? Because I do think they are very different. Um, the, the Connecticut Association of Public School Superintendents keeps a list of those generally recently retired superintendents who are interested in serving in the interim role. They do not want to come back to work full time in any district, but they they actually welcome the chance to help a board through a transition period. You are absolutely right that the pool of retired individuals in Connecticut does not reflect the diversity of, of this community. But remember that they are serving an interim role. So the qualities that you're going to look for in them would be how, how do you ensure stability for your, your schools, your staff, your students in the next um, four to six months? Uh, what's their experience? What are your major projects that need to be continue to move through the pipeline? What are, are their experiences in addressing those types of issues? So I, I understand the dilemma, but um, these are experienced individuals that can literally hit the ground running because they know how to run a school district. Did I answer? You broke it down into two questions. Yeah, no, I forgot the second part. I'm like, wait a minute, that was for interim. Yep. Retired superintendent. Great, first time I didn't write down my question, I forget it. I'll think of it again. Okay. I, I mean, that's really the outline of the process. So um, it, it is a labor intensive process. That's why you want a professional that will guide you through that process. Um, it's an amazing opportunity for a board of education. We have seen many cases where it helps a board become stronger as a body because you have to have those conversations about what your priorities are. 
and how you're, what the characteristics of an individual are that will best meet the needs of this district. Anyone else? Okay. So does someone want to make a motion? Please the chair, before, sorry, I'm trying to press this button, yeah. Um, whoever is going to run for the superintendent of the school has to live in Bridgeport or, the, or is not necessarily live in Bridgeport? That again is a decision of the Board of Education. Um, you should think about that decision um, carefully. It, mm -hmm. it, I, 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 I'm not a real estate agent, so I won't talk about the current housing market. I understand. And my last question is, and I, I don't know, Mr. Chair, you can answer me that, Mr. Testani. Know that we're going to have a process to find out exactly who's going to be superintendent of the school. I know we have amazing three executive director here. They cannot be one of them in charge until we hire exactly who can be the person the superintendent of the school. That's um, you know, you could do that, but then you face the dilemma of what their current job is, is not what they're doing anymore. So you create a vacancy somewhere else. Yeah. So that could be an issue. Um, I think that's why you, to, the, to the extent you can, you want to use an outsider. You know, we, we have some people in our ranks who have the 093, they're principals. If you pull that guy out of his school to be the superintendent, now you got to find a principal. So I think, I think you know that would be like a last resort if you just couldn't find it anywhere else. All right, thank you. I just want to know. Thank you for the information. Okay, so I would seek a motion to establish a personnel search committee to fill the position of superintendent of schools, with the members being the full board of education. So moved. Second. Palovic, second by Mr. Benahan. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Roll call vote. The opposed? Aye. A vote in favor. I said second. roll call vote. Oh. You want a roll call? Yeah. Yes, please. I mean, oh. John Weldon? Yes. Bobby Brown? Yes. <laughs> Yes. I can't hear you, Joe. Oh, sorry. sorry about that. Put your mics on when you vote. Sorry, sir. So far, uh, John Weldon, Bobby Brown, Sybil Allen, Christine Baptiste Perez voted in favor. Albert Benahan? Yes. Erica Castillo? Aye. Uh, Michael Macaron? Yes. Yes. Joseph Sokolovic? Yes. And Joseph Lombard? Yes. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor? Aye. The opposed? Aye. Time is noted as 8.02 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.